Okay. Uh, once you get your flow rate, you can get the mean velocity just by dividing those. Because when you take the integration, it becomes meter square per second, right? If you integrate with the distance, with the head, then it becomes meter per second, which means that one is your mean velocity, okay? Your mean velocity will be different with the maximum velocity, and it will be different with the velocity at some point. It can be the same, it can be different. Okay, so that's all. So I don't want you to remember this, no need to remember, you just remember the first one. And most of the time, this one is also given, the appendix. So, just know how to use it, okay? And how to scratch the correct term, because that one will not be given. Okay, any question? If no question, okay. Uh, as I promised to you now, what happens if we give the value, right? Glycerin at 20 degrees C, having velocity of this, the distance is 5 cm, the pressure gradient is given. You know why it is negative? Because flow will always move from high pressure to low pressure. Mm -mm. There is no way it moves from the low pressure to the high pressure unless Graffiti play its its role, you know. Sometimes you put the pump there. You want to pump the the water aboard, but because the pump is not strong enough, the graffiti play around. It will move down rather than push up. Okay. So except there is a graffiti, the flow will always move from. High pressure to low pressure. The same for your temperature. The temperature will always move from, sorry, the heat will always move from high temperature to low temperature. Except you provide work, like your aircon. Okay, this room is cooler than the outside, but still you drive the heat from this room to the outside because you apply the work. Okay, that's the only condition you can do it. Otherwise, no way. Right? The heat from the outside will come in. Too. Okay? So that's why you get negative 1.6 kilopascal per meter. Why per meter? Because it is gradient. dp dx. Okay? In some cases, you will not be given the number, but you may be given a manometer. What happens if you are given manometers? Right? When you are given manometers, it will be like that, right? So you need to calculate the pressure gradient between P1 and P2. Right? Once you have that, you know the distance between both. Let's say it put 10 cm. So you know you will have P2 minus P1 divided by 0 0.1 meter. Then this one will become your pressure gradient. That can be done also. Okay, depending on the on the condition of your lecture, if your your lecture has a has a free time, maybe you will play around with this. Okay, if your lecture is in a in a rush, maybe you will make even worse than that. So anyway, it will not be easy. Okay, so this one is given to you like this. Can you do this now? Now you can see here, the U is given to you. This is the U that we have just found, right? Your mu is there, so mu is known. Uh, H is known, right? H is known. DP, DA is known. So what else do you need? Why is the question? The question is, you need to find the velocity at Y equal to zero, okay? So you just plug in there. This one zero, this one zero, doesn't matter what is it about, this one will become zero. That was for the velocity. What happened to the shear stress? Do you remember what is the definition of shear stress? Tau is equal to mu 
du over dy, which means you need to find du over dy. When you take du over dy, this y square become 2y, the hy become h. h. As simple as that. Now you can plug in all the value, right? Any question about that? You have your mu, you have your u, so you take derivation of u to the y, which means you will end up having this one. Yeah? Now you plug in. This y is 0. So this one is 0. H is 0. 5. five. Okay, so it becomes negative 5. You plug in. You get du dy is this one. Remember this one is still du dy. You still have mu. So you need to times it with mu. So if you do that, you will get your tau is equal to 4 t pascal. <laughs> solution will still be the same the only difference is the boundary condition so if you look at the if you look at the step everything look exactly the same so I hope you will look into it on your own time okay but the only difference now come in the boundary condition number two Rather than having u equal to 0, now you have u equal to u. What is the effect of that is your c1 will be a bit longer. Okay? Since your c1 is a little bit longer, your complete solution will also be longer. The only difference is this. When it is not moving, this u over by is not there, but when the top plate is moving, you will have this addition. Okay, so that is the only difference between flow scenario number one and flow scenario number two. Okay.